welcome back to another video hope you are having a great day and today we are going to take a look at a do-it-yourself mini nash server based on the zima blade which is this mini computer that is sitting right here on the top now besides taking a look at the specifications how we assemble this which is really simple we are also going to take a look at casa os which is the operating system that comes built in with the zima blade now the casa os is an operating system that you can install on any computer so if you still haven't decided if you are going to go with the zima blade or even with the zima board which we have seen here on the channel and i will refer to it in just a few moments casa os is a awesome operating system i want to share with you some of the things right over here including how we can install apps in a really quick and easy way and even increasing the size of the app store which is really awesome that being said let's go and take a closer look at the do-it-yourself nash kit with the zim blade and if you are watching this video on your windows 10 or 11 computer and you still haven't activated and can't even edit your desktop icons don't forget to check out cdksales.com where we can find budget official om keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description it will get even cheaper and besides windows 11 pro if you are looking for windows 10 or even an office suit that we can aggregate directly to our microsoft account you can use the same coupon code which will give you the best price possible at this moment so just in case the link will be down below okay so zima blade is a mini computer from the same manufacturer that develops the zima board we have done quite a few videos on the zima board i will leave some links down below one of the things that they have in common which actually they have a few things in common is the possibility to use the pci slot right over here or the pci slot on the zima blade which i can't show you right now because i've got everything connected but it's easy as just selecting this board for example and if i wanted to add an extra two m.2 ssds plus a sata connection there we go we have used in the past with network adapters and all sorts of adapters for example if i wanted an extra three usb ports plus two usb type c i just needed to use this adapter right over here pcie and that will be it so this is a great expansion opportunity on both these boards the design is a bit different as we can see but we will take a closer look in just a few moments this is the nash packet and what comes included is one two three four small boxes one of which comes with the zim blade which has a refreshing look it's transparent it's really really awesome then on the other package it comes the do-it-yourself nash kit which basically will take two drives right over here i'm using two toshiba n300 eight terabytes each so at this moment 16 terabytes on this mini server setup which is not bad at all it also comes with the power adapter a mini display port to hdmi cable and basically that is it a few more cables but you can see by the images in terms of the assembly it's really straightforward we just need to place in the hard drives on the cage which I, as i said i'm using the two toshiba n300 eight terabytes each just screw them up and once we screw them we can just attach the cables and that is it connect a ethernet cable connect a usb type c cable to power it on and it's ready to start using now if you want to have image directly from the mini computer the zima blade to a display we just need to connect the mini display port to hdmi and that is great if i want to use windows or any other desktop operating system which i can use it because it's totally compatible but in this particular case we are using casa os and this we will be managing on a web interface on any computer that we have on our network so we will not need this cable and we will not need a display to connect we just need to place this somewhere on a corner with a ethernet cable and that is it easy as this in terms of the setup now in terms of specifications it's easier if i show you right over here the zima blade has two versions the 3760 and the 770 which is the one that i've got right over here. so we are talking about a quad core which is based on these cpus right over here or we also have the option to get a dual core which is a 3350 and it will be great for any mini server i would suggest a quad core if you want to run a lot of apps or if one of those apps is a plex 
MB or Jellyfin server so you can stream on your network or even outside your network your multimedia movies, series and so on. So there is these two choices. If we take a look at the Zima boards, uh, we can see that the specifications is more or less the same. So we have three options instead of two, but two of them are quad cores with the same CPU, the N3450 and one is the 3350. Now for prices and whatnot, I will leave the link down below so that you can check out and compare everything and then decide if you want to go for the Zima board, which once again, links down below because we have done quite a few contents in terms of replacing our router with one of these, installing Proxmox, OPN Sense, PF Sense and whatnot, a lot. And what I can do with this one, I can also do with the Zima. So just that that in mind. Now specifications out of the way, in terms of connectivity on the Zima Blade, we will find two SATA connection ports, one gigabit LAN port, two USB 3.0, one PCIe 2.0, one mini display port 1.2 that does 4K at 60 Hz and a USB Type-C power delivery and if you take a look at the specifications it consumes really really low energy which is great to leave it on 24 7 during the whole year i did a few weeks a video on a nash solution do it yourself with nine drives a motherboard and a full power supply and whatnot and it was consuming about 80 watts and we did the math and it costs about 170 euros more or less of electricity per year so it's a totally different beast and if you really need it then it's a great solution I will link down below but if you want something low cost on the purchase and low cost on the energy consumption this is a great option and now that we have seen the specifications connectivity how to assemble the NAS let's go to the Casa OS operating system which for those that never tried this is just awesome and if you are on the fence of purchasing the Zima Blade or the Zima board you can install Casa OS on any older or newer computer that you have and you can test it out for yourself and then decide if this is the best option for you or not. Now here on the dashboard we have a really friendly Interface. I can see the CPU status, which is using 1% at this moment. I can see the date and hour, the RAM usage. It also tells me that it did find um, a new drive, in this particular case, two drives, which are the Toshiba 8 terabytes each. We can also sync data. And I already installed here one app. We also have the files browser, so I can put in my data, pictures, and whatnot. And besides that, we have the App Store, which we are going to take just a few moments. We have the storage available at this moment, only the internal storage because the Toshiba hard drives are still not on the system. They are not formatted. We need to format them. And then the network status right over here and the option to enable or disable things that we don't want. For example, if I want to disable all this, I can or I can enable. So it comes ready to start and use it placing files, documents and whatnot. But one of the most interesting things to me on any system, not only this one, is an easy way to install apps and grow our system according to our needs. And here we have an app store, which I did a few videos already on the channel. So if I don't forget, I will leave some links down below. But for those that never used Casa OS, if you want to install, for example, AdGuard Home, which I already did, I was recording the Portuguese video on my other channel, or any other app right over here, we can. So for example, if you want an MB service, it's just easy as press install. But for example, let me search for Pi Home. I hold, as you know, and Adquad Home, which are similar with some differences, are here to protect our network from ads and from a lot of stuff. You can read that and you can watch some videos. But if I wanted to install, I just need to press install. Default password is Casa OS. Okay, just gave me that warning. And look at the easiness of this installing and I will not even speed up the video. I will wait here with you but is as simple as this. Installing PyHole, installation complete. I could have pressed continue in the background, but I didn't, I will press right now. Installing PyHole, and as we can see, it's right over here. It has a password, which is Casa OS. I did the same procedure for Adguard Home. So at this moment, if I press here, I will have the Adguard Home uh, first steps I'd need to configure, I didn't yet. And if we go to PyHole, we have the same situation if I press right over here, Casa O 
as I will log in and I'm inside the, let's just close these windows, I'm inside my whole configuration and then I can play around with this. Now I could do this with Jellyfin, I could do this with MB, with Plex, as we can see we have a lot of apps, but just in case that you want to play around and you find yourself, okay, I want more apps, I will show you a very easy way, which is great. Now, if you go to Google, and I will try to leave a link down below if I don't forget, you just need to search for Awesome Casa OS list. And at this moment, it has eight extra lists, but this is growing. So if you watch this video later on, probably there is a few more. Uh, there is eight, as I said, but there's one which is my favorite. This is the Big Bear. Casa OS. And if I press right over here, it will take me there. If I want, I can go to the GitHub uh, repo and I can uh, read and I can see that there are a lot of apps so you can check it out. And if I want to install this, I just need to copy right over here and then let's go to Casa OS and where it says add source, I just need to press it here and then paste what I just copied and press add. And it will take about a few seconds or so. And it says updating the information source of the App Store is complete. So this means that at this moment, I already have 229 apps. And if I want to delete by any reason, I just need to press this button and I can delete this list. And, and that is it. I will be as I was before. Now, once we scroll, we will see that some of the apps, this one, for example, I already installed, but we have another Outguard the home right over here and another one right over here. And we can see that we have the Big Bear Casa OS, Big Bear Casa OS uh, below the apps that we can see that now are new. So we are not limited to the apps that come with Casa OS. There are these ways that we can increase the apps that we can. And this is just awesome, not only here. Actually, just a confession, which is my personal favorite way to use, and this is the way that I use Casa OS, is on top of Proxmox so that I have even more uh, possibilities and I also have on top of CasaOS dockers and port trainers so we can install a lot more. For example, Home Assistant, which I believe that in the original we also had Home Assistant, but in case we didn't, here it is, Home Assistant or any other app that I want to install. And basically this is it regarding the Casa OS operating system. It's really, really simple. You can use it on your computer today. You can install it. Just go to Casa OS, download it, install it. It's really easy and simple and you will have this interface. The Zima Blade on the other side is a really simple way to have this, uh, this software on a small footprint hardware on a simple, easy way to assemble and configure. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one.